In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with affiliate marketing for beginners and choosing the correct platform. Let's get started. Hello YouTube, it's Austin, and welcome to my channel where I help you find success online. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell if you are interested in different tips and tricks and how to find success online. All right, so as I mentioned in this video, I am going to help you pick the right platform for your affiliate marketing business. In my last video in this series, I helped you pick a niche. If you have missed that video, if you did not watch that one, I will actually leave a link to it above and below. All right, so in this video, we're going to pick the right platform. Now, what I mean by platform is where you're going to create and host and where your content is going to live. In my mind, there are two types of platforms. There's a primary platform and a secondary platform. The primary platform is where your content is going to live. That's where people are going to be able to go to if they want to learn information about you, if they want to learn more, if they if they have questions, a, a primary platform is where they're going to go. And in my mind, there are three types, which I'll talk about in just a moment. In addition to a primary platform, I also believe that there is a secondary platform. Now, a secondary platform is different from primary and that a secondary platform is what you're going to use to push people, to siphon people, to take people from to send to your primary uh, base of operations. For example, you're if you're just getting started, you probably don't have a following and you need to go out and get that following. You're going to use your secondary platform to get that following back to your first and then you can grow from there. So we'll talk about both the primary and secondary, but let's get into the primary right now. In my mind, there are three types of primary platforms. There's self-hosted blogging, there's YouTube or video marketing, and then there's podcasts. Now let's talk about each, we'll, we'll talk about the pros and cons of each and, and my recommendation. Now in general, with your primary platform, you wanna create content on a platform where your customer is going to be. For example, if you are creating a visual, if you're creating content in a visual, visual niche, then create videos. A blog or a podcast might not be the best suited and you might not get the customer base that you're looking for. So just spend a little bit of time, do a little bit of research and think about where you should create your platform. So that's step number one. But let's talk about the three more in depth blogging, YouTube or video, and a podcast. So blogging. The pros of using blogging as your primary platform is that it's easy to start. It's a staple of internet content, so basically everyone expects or, or is familiar with blogging. Uh, people are comfortable with creating blogging content, and you can get found with organic search on Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, as well as Google. In addition, I would uh, argue that blogging is probably the most evergreen, depending on the type of content that you that you create. And the biggest benefit in my mind with blogging is that it's your own platform. If you're doing self-hosted blogging, that is 100% your content. In most cases, it can't be taken away from you. As long as you're paying the bill every year or every three years, however you set it up, it can't be taken away from you. Now, those are the pros of blogging. Some of the cons are uh, blogging is starting to become outdated. It's not outdated yet. You can still find lots of success with a blog, but more people are shifting towards uh, YouTube videos and podcasts. Um, it's also the most competitive because blogging has been around for so long. There are millions of blog posts in a variety of topics. Also, with blogging, you have to do a lot of things right. There's keyword research, there are titles, tags, um, descriptions. There's just a lot of things that you have to do correctly in order to find success with blogging. Also with blogging, it can take a little bit longer to find success. Uh, for example, with blogging, it can take at least six months before you start gaining organic traffic, again, depending on your niche. So that's the first one, blogging. The second one is video marketing, which I also associate with YouTube videos. The reason why I say YouTube videos is because YouTube is the biggest video platform out there and it outpaces everything else by a wide margin. So most people expect to watch videos on YouTube and not anywhere else. Now let's talk about some of the pros of YouTube. It's less competitive. You can also get found with organic search and it's actually kind of easy to get started. The only thing you need is uh, really a cell phone. If you wanna upgrade, you can get a camera and a microphone, but you don't need all of that stuff to get started. You can get started with whatever content you have in front of you. As long as you have a cell phone and an internet connection, you can be a YouTuber. Also, another pro or strength of video marketing is that it's easy to get discovered. One of the things that you'll notice on this YouTube video is there are suggested or recommended videos that accompany this video. 
you can get found or, or, or I can get traction or get found by being one of those suggested videos. And it's also a great way to build rapport. Now, those are some of the pros. Let's talk about some of the cons or the drawbacks of video marketing. Now, one of the biggest drawbacks is competition is increasing. People are realizing that there is a ton of opportunity in the video space and more and more people are gravitating towards that opportunity. Also, there's less control than when you compare it to blogging. Because you are not owning your own platform, you kind of have to acquiesce to the rules and policies of YouTube and the other um, pieces of um, the, the other platforms out there. It can also be a little bit more expensive to uh, to get going. Now, while I said you, you really only only need your cell phone to get going to start, uh, if you think about the cost of a cell phone, it's eight hundred bucks. If you want to upgrade to a nicer mic or to a camera, you're going to be looking at you know five hundred bucks before you can get up and running. Whereas with blogging, a uh, hundred dollars per year, and you can be a blogger. And the next one is it, it can be difficult to build an audience in the beginning. Like YouTube, or excuse me, like blogging, it does take some time to start finding traction and it's very easy to get discouraged because you're creating content and you can see that nobody is watching it. Next is uh, one of the biggest drawbacks in my mind to YouTube and, and video marketing is content is not as evergreen. Now, once you get your content out there, people can refer to it for years to come, but People are constantly creating new content on a topic or your topic, which you have to compete against. Uh, while that's true for both blogging and YouTube, you see that uh, more frequently with, with YouTube videos. Now that we have talked about YouTube, let's talk a little bit about podcasts. Podcasts are probably the newest entrant into content marketing. And one of the great things about, about podcasts is that the content can be consumed anywhere. Uh, someone's catching the train to work, someone's driving into work, maybe they're doing the dishes or cooking or whatever, you can listen to a podcast because it's not visual. You don't have to read it. You don't have to watch it. You can just listen to it. And with podcasts, it's actually really easy to get started as long as you have a, a microphone, kind of like video marketing. As long as you have a way to record your voice, you can start a podcast. And one of the biggest benefits to podcasting is basically anyone can do it. All right, so let's take a look at some of the cons. Um, it's very difficult to build an audience. You will probably have to rely on either blogging or YouTube videos in order to get traction with podcasts. You'll have to rely on some other method in order to get some traction. Next is you may have to create content more frequently. Uh, when compared to um, blogging or YouTube videos, the content is certainly not as evergreen. And so you're actually going to have to create series and episodes and constantly have fresh content for people co to consume. Another drawback is that anyone can do it. Much like a, a positive, there can be a con as well because anyone can do it. There's going to be a lot of competition. And that leads me to my next point. There is an increasing level of competition that you need to be aware of. And then, as I mentioned before, you will probably have to pair this with video content and or blogging at least to start. All right. So those are the pro pros and cons of the three primary platforms. Now, let's talk a little bit about the secondary platforms. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, secondary platforms, I call secondary because you're going to use these platforms to push people or siphon people or take people away to your primary platform. Also, I call it secondary because it takes a lot of effort to get traction. Uh, the content isn't as evergreen. Um, and it's, it, while it is a great opportunity to, to go viral, continuously create content and continuously have presence in order to gain significant traction in these platforms that I'm going to mention. So let's take a quick look or, or let's talk a little bit about these secondary platforms. Now, in my mind, a secondary platform is social media. So that includes LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, Snapchat, whatever else is out there. Quora and Reddit. Now, if you think about these things, the one thing that all three have in common is that content is constantly being added and removed, uh, but it's very difficult to gain to sustain traction. Think about Twitter and how often people are uploading content or information that uh, can get lost. And so basically what you want to do is you obviously you want to use relevant hashtags. You just want to follow the policies and processes of these secondary platforms and draw people or push people back to your primary platform. So what I would do is, for example, if I'm using Twitter as my secondary platform, I would go in and answer a question or provide value and say, hey, if you want to learn more about this topic, check out my blog post or check out my YouTube channel. 
and then use the relevant hashtags. It's pretty much the same for all for all of social media. Hashtags are really taken over and help uh, provide an industry standard, we'll say. Core is a little bit different. Core is a question and answer site in which people will ask questions like, how do I lose 10 pounds in 10 days? You'll provide a quality answer and then you'll tell people, hey, if you want to learn more about losing weight, if you want to lose, if you want to find out how to lose 10 pounds in eight days, click this link, check out my video or listen to this podcast. Reddit is a forum site in which people will post memes, questions, comments in different areas. Now, the cool thing about Reddit is there are a number of subreddits, and these are basically categorized forums where you can go in and have a presence. Now, what you wanna do when it comes to Quora and Reddit is you wanna make sure that you become the subject matter expert. You go in there, you answer question, you provide value, people will start to see you as an expert and a knowledge base, and they'll start to follow you. Once you do that, you can start posting your um, your primary platform, for example, your blog posts or your YouTube videos and tell people to check it out. And so that's how you gain your following over a long time. So that is step two, which is picking a platform. Again, if you have not checked out step one, which is picking a, a niche, I definitely urge you to do that. The step after that is keyword research, which will get into the nitty gritty and how to get started with affiliate marketing as a beginner. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.